begin to thank you for everything you've done. Come on, sing this. So keep on loving me. You caused my heart to sing. Yeah, oh you, you make me come alive again. Oh you.
it out. There's power. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will.
or we're going to have body ministry here, spiritual transference. There's going to be, it's going to be an amazing thing, this service. The Holy Spirit showed me uh, something very interesting about healing. Sometimes there's a miracle where you're just healed. Other times, of course, there's doctors and general recovery. But sometimes there's a process. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, I'm beginning a process of healing today in people. A few weeks ago, I was suffering from uh, over a year from a little neuropathy in my my uh, feet where they were feeling a little numb and dead. And I had, I had our team and our staff meeting pray for me about two or three weeks ago. And ever since then, every day, I've been getting better till I am better. And you want to know what? I believe a medicinal thing by the Holy Spirit is going to be started in some of you today that's going to begin a healing process. You might get the rest of it late in this service, a week from now, a month from now, but he's turning some things around. So just open up your heart. We're going to pray. We're going to break the sickness and infirmity. And I'm selling you a number of you online. Online someone as well. Online somebody is... Online, somebody's considering suicide. God's going to break that off you by the time this hour is done. You will not want to kill yourself any longer. Church, get ready to receive. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. We release the healing power of the cross on this place, on the airwaves, through Facebook and YouTube. The power of Christ, the power of the cross. We release healing power on bodies, breaking sickness, pain, demonic oppression go in the name of jesus lord we receive from you we receive begin to worship him worship his church he's making all things right the precious blood of christ speaks to the new connections in the brain being restored and healed and things that maybe make someone or somebody a little whacked or have a disconnect God's healing some mental things and so right now we're going to keep worshiping depression other mental issues related to fear isolation things that have happened things that they can't walk away from God we release and we receive your healing power for our minds for our brains for our mental state, we cancel anxiety and worry. And God, we ask that you heal what you created in Jesus' name. He's calling out my name. He's calling your name. Come on. And he's breaking. He's breaking those chains today. Come on. He's making all things right. The precious blood of your eyes. Oh, 
give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your grace. Oh. Amen. God's presence is in this place. Woo. Turn around and greet your neighbor. Make some noise. To everyone who's been with us online, welcome, welcome, welcome. May the same presence that's here pervade your living space, your room, your car, wherever you're at. You're going to have an awesome time this morning. I really believe, I really believe that literally during this entire hour, the Holy Spirit is healing, is touching, is bringing revelation, God's directing. I think it's a creative hour for us, especially this day. So uh, be open for that. Uh, it's, it's crazy what, uh, what I'm feeling. I've decided to say everything that comes across my brain today, so who knows what's going to happen, okay? Um, you... J- <laughs> could be scary. Um, as we take the offering today, which we won't take, um, there's buckets back by the door. You can do it old school, where if you're, you're old school, you can mail a, your, your tithe or commitment check to the church. You can put it in a bucket as you leave, or you can do it online. As we do, just remember, this place, literally one of our pillars is faithful giving. It's part of worship. It's taking stuff you could use to get your own stuff and do whatever you own want. And first and foremost, saying, God, this belongs to you, my money belongs to you, I belong to you. And you know what happens? As we consistently do it, here's what it is. God doesn't need our money. He, I mean, he, as I shared a week or two ago, he isn't broke. He created the world out of nothing like B, and there it was. But he goes into partnership with us to teach us how to be like him and do the same things he does. And when we partner with him, we're stripped from self-centeredness, which is our biggest enemy, more than the devil, far beyond the devil. He had dealt with the devil, but I'm telling you what, self-centeredness is a process to go. And as we give consistently, we go into partnership with God for all eternity in this life and the next age, and we're stripped from self-centeredness. So keep giving, church. It's awesome. It's awesome. And he always gives us more than enough, and we use it to bless the nations. These messages are going out to India Millions of people get to see what's going on in this room. It's amazing. And uh, so as we give, we'll pray. And I want to say one other thing. The Sportsman's Banquet's coming up in a couple of weeks. We're going to have a giant man get together. It's going to be a man fest. It's going to be crazy. And uh, guys, sign up, though, rather quickly. You can sign up online at at events. But do it rather quickly because we're going to have a ton of food here. And we uh, need to know how many are coming. And it's always full, but... Could you sign up and take somebody with you? 45 guys a couple of years got saved and changed their lives, and they're some of our members of this church this very day because of that manifest thing we had. So, and we got stuff, grand prizes, and, and uh, rifles, and Yeti coolers, and bicycles, and all kinds of really stuff. It's all bait to reel in the community, you know. And, uh, but we're gonna have a great time. So guys, spread the word and be there. Lord, we just pray over our offering today. Lord, we put you first. You want to be first in every area of our life. If you played golf, 18 would be your score. Uh, We put you first with our money. Take it. Strip us from self-centeredness. Lord, we're glad to be in partnership with you. Money can take wings and fly away in this uncertain world, but what we give to you is never lost. Build a portfolio of grace through our lives that lasts for time and eternity, we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us in person and online at City Church Rockford. Tomorrow evening, March 1st, we will be hosting our next City Kids Volunteer Training Session. This in-person training is to walk both new and current volunteers through all of the details so you feel comfortable and equipped to serve. Whether you have a desire to rock a baby, interact with toddlers, or lead a small group, we have a place for you. You don't need to have a teaching background or any certification, just a desire to show the love of Jesus to our City Kids. If you're curious and just want to check it out before jumping in, this is a great time to do that. We're meeting at 7 p.m. in Studio A, and we hope to see you there. To learn more or to register, please visit the church website.
If you are newer to this church or feel like you haven't gotten connected yet, we have a great four-week series called On Ramp. This series is designed to help you get to know us better, connect with others, and explore all that God has for you as part of this church family. We'd love to meet you and get to know you better. On Ramp meets on Thursday evenings and a new session begins this Thursday, March 4th. Child care is available for children ages 2 through 10 with pre-registration. To learn more or to sign up, please stop at the Welcome Center in the lobby or visit the church website. Attention men! Just a quick reminder that our next session of the Conqueror series begins on Monday evening, March 8th. The Conqueror series is a life-changing, 10-week discipleship study that lays out a battle plan for sexual purity. It provides men with biblical strategies, science, and insight on how to use God's weapons to become conquerors. For more information or to sign up, please go to the church website. Also for the men, the Sportsman's Dinner will be held on Monday, March 15th, and all men ages 7 and up are invited to attend. Tickets are just $10 and are on sale now at the church website. Would you be willing to pray for one hour to end abortion? 40 Days for Life is a pro-life effort that consists of 40 days of praying, fasting, and holding a peaceful vigil in front of an abortion clinic. Dozens of area churches have adopted a day of prayer. Our day is Friday, March 19th. We would like to have at least two individuals per hour from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. For more information and to sign up, please visit the church website. From June 27th through the 30th, our junior and senior high youth are invited to attend Camp Harvest in Nuego. The price will be $295 per student and registration is coming soon. This can be a life-changing experience for any young person who is seeking to learn about God and how to follow Him. So mark your calendars and watch for more information coming soon. If you have any questions or anything we can help with, please go to one of the Welcome Centers in the lobby today. Visit our website or call the church office. Good morning, church. Awesome time we're having with the Lord today, and uh, just excited. Uh, we're going to. Uh, this is a transformation service where we celebrate what God is doing, change lives, and we take communion, uh, which is the Lord's Supper, uh, which is literally Jesus commanded us to do, and He said, "Do it systematically and regularly as a sign of faith that we belong to Him." And, and that we're his family, and to do it in remembrance of what he did for us. So what we do today is significant. There's spiritual power in it. It's the meal that heals. And I'm going to tell you, there's, it's being recorded in heaven. Uh, everything that we do in faith is recorded, and it has spiritual power that works inwardly and outwardly through our lives. So we're going to go over a little of that today. We're also going to celebrate baptism, which is the outward sign of an inward turning. Uh, and it literally separates you and I from our past, and it puts distance, and it sets a seal in the next process of God in our life where the invisible life that we couldn't see before we got right with God becomes visible. Suddenly we become spiritually discerning. Spiritual things come much easier. Understanding in the Word of God, ability to hear the Holy Spirit, an infinite number of things get released. I meet people once in a while who haven't been baptized, and they go, well, I don't really feel a need to be baptized. I says, are you out of your mind? It's like, you know, my line's really with one-liners. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's an important thing. That's why almost anywhere you go, it says, he that believes and baptized shall be saved. He says, repent, believe, Peter said to all the whole crowd on Pentecost. Repent, believe, and be baptized, every one of you. Why did he keep tacking baptism on? Not as necessary to be saved. I mean, the thief in the cross never got baptized, and he made it into heaven, but I'm telling you what, it is part of the process, and you and I will miss out big if we don't engage. So any time during this service, from right this minute to any time during it when we have different spots, there'll be a couple of, we're going to celebrate some awesome testimonies of healing and salvation uh, in the middle of my message. And it's all part of our day's celebration and service. You can get up at any time during that. Head out the back. They got a shirt. Start a fire with water for you to wear and keep and the, all the clothes you need so that you can leave right back in your street clothes like you came in. The shirt will fit you absolutely perfect, ladies. It's amazing. And you can get a makeover in the back room afterwards. Uh, no, but you can get a spiritual makeover when you get baptized. We got a whole bunch of people getting baptized today. Is that awesome? 
But a few, a few things about communion and a couple things about baptism and then some testimonies in the middle of this message just to encourage us to see what God is doing and can do in your life. And if you're on the airwaves watching this, hang on and watch because remember, this is an hour of spiritual power where the Holy Spirit's brooding over us and literally speaking things to us, adjusting things and fixing things. So this is a supernatural hour. So hang in there. Here we go. Uh, we celebrate communion. What is it? Communion celebrates the broken body of Jesus and his shed blood for us that purchased redemption and salvation for us. There's an Old Testament from way back in the time of the ancients. There are shadows and pictures of communion from the very beginning, way back when Israel was delivered from Egypt, which Egypt represents spiritual bondage in the world and, and all that goes with it. And, Egypt, and, and Israel was in bondage for 400 years, and God delivered them from Egypt and from bondage, a covenant nation by the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost of their house. And so what they did is is, is uh, Moses the deliverer, who was an Old Testament type of Christ, told them, get some blood in a basin, take a hyssop branch, and paint the doorposts of your house with blood. And when the angel of death and judgment comes through, it won't touch you, just like Rahab's house when the whole city collapsed in going into Jericho. Hers didn't because she had a red cord hanging out the window and a sign of the bloodline. And so here's the thing. There's tremendous power there, and we'll keep talking about this. So they were delivered from Egypt, and they left Egypt with the plunder of Egypt, and they went off into the wilderness on the way to the promised land on a journey into everything God had for them. This is an Old Testament shadow of a spiritual reality that we have today as it's ongoing through history. And he said, take a hyssop branch and paint the blood. That's how they got it on the doorpost. Now, what is a hyssop branch? A hyssop branch kind of looks like a piece of broccoli. Um, it's, uh, it's got a stem and then a little clump on the end uh, that looks a little, a little bulb. And actually, when it really dried out the hyssop branch, it would get all, all uh, stiff like a brush bristle. And uh, if you, if you didn't cut trim broccoli, it'd have a little stem about that long. We, you, you see it in the store cut back a bit, but uh, it would normally have a handle on it with that little thing like that, and that's what a hyssop branch looks like. And uh, kids, you've all seen broccoli. Carter, Carter likes the stems. I like the head, so I, I trim off the... He, he puts the... Well, he eats, them, he eats it all now. He's actually... Uh, but I'm telling you what, it looks like a little paintbrush. And that's what he said. There was hyssop growing all over the place. So they just broke off a dry branch with a little cluster on the end of it. And they would dip it in the basin and paint the, the, the doorpost. And that's how they got the sign of the blood on the doorpost. And by the way, the Bible says in Proverbs in multiple places that our mind and our heart are the doorposts of our lives. It says, attend to his words incline our ear to his sayings it says for his uh, he says keep them in the midst of your heart put them on the doorpost of your heart and your mind their life to those that find them in hell to all their flesh i believe that's in proverbs 4 so so how do we today in the new covenant we've been delivered from spiritual egypt from this from the world from the penalty of sin death and hell and we do it it's the blood of the lamb that was shed for us, that purchased salvation for us. And, but, but how do we apply the power of Christ's blood in an ongoing way in our lives? We do it initially when we come to Christ, but we can do it in an ongoing way. And how do we do that? And why can we do that? It was shed 2,000 years ago, his blood, but it's literally a, has present power because it was an eternal sacrifice. And so because it was eternal, and Jesus' blood wasn't just spilled on the ground. It was spilled, it was presented in heaven by Christ himself. The Bible says, seeing as we have a heavenly high priest who has passed through the heavens with a sign of his blood, let us hold fast to our confession. So it has present power because we have an eternal high priest who is both God and man, who now his blood has present power because it was an eternal sacrifice. And because of that, his blood still speaks. And so the rest of this five minutes of this message is an expository on better word. You know, sometimes we sing songs and people go, what does that song mean? Do you know the blood of Christ is still speaking? It's speaking a better word. It talks. It has a voice. In the spirit, it has a voice. And you want to know what? 
The Bible talks about the voice of the blood, and it starts earliest when we see that shed blood has a voice when Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve, got into a struggle because God accepted Abel's sacrifice but not Cain's. See, Abel sacrificed a little lamb in its blood, and, and, and God was pleased with it, but he was not pleased with Cain's heart or the quality of his sacrifice, so he rejected Cain. And Cain was so angry, he murdered his brother. And so then God goes to Cain, and he says, I'm giving you the fast version because I can't do an expository on it. He says, where's your brother? And he goes, I don't know, my, my, my brother's keeper? I mean, I don't know. And he says, well, I know where he is. He's dead. And he says, your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. So that blood had a voice. Do you know Abel's blood shed on the ground was a precursor to civic law? and justice, reward and penalty for not following the law with consequences. It was a precursor to civic law. But he says he accepted Abel. And then we move to Hebrews chapter 11. It says, by faith, Abel offered a more pleasant, pleasing sacrifice to God of the blood of this lamb. And he says it was accepted. And so now, even though he was murdered, even though he was dead, he being dead, he still speaks. And by the way, what is it? Mm, 3,200 years later, a guy in Rockford's talking about the blood of Abel and what it represented. That blood had a voice. And to Christ's blood shed in the heavens, shed in eternity, has present power from yesterday to cover today and to cover your tomorrow. And it has a voice and it speaks. It's singing out your name. It's shutting the lies down. It's literally, it speaks a word of life that cancels out everything the devil has ever wants to do in your and my life. It has present power. And that's why when we sing, uh, sing this, and, and it rewrites your and my history. And we'll see some of that in the testimonies pretty soon. But we see the blood has present power. And so you say, but pastor, okay, but how do I apply the power of the blood to my life in an ongoing way? Uh, well, initially we do it when we confess and believe and apply it, but let me break it down to you. You do it the same way in a spiritual sense as Israel did. The blood is applied by your and my testimony. Your hyssop branch, your broccoli piece, your broccoli paintbrush is your mouth, your voice that activates what's going on inside and connects you to eternal things. You see, there was a spiritual war in heaven that we see in the end of days where Michael and his angels are fighting with, with fallen angelic powers. And it says the saints on earth were confessing and holding on to their confession. And it says that Michael and his angels were literally successful in defeating the devil in the heavenly places where he was cast down to earth. And all kinds of crazy stuff started to happen. And we've seen some crazy stuff starting to happen. And, uh, but I will tell you this. It says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The thing that applied the power of the blood was their testimony. Your testimony is your hyssop branch. And so the late Derek Prince came up with the best one-liner I ever heard about how to apply the blood. I've heard people say, well, we plead the blood of Christ over that. Well, I'm not saying there's not spiritual power in there, but let's be more specific. We need to personally testify to what the word says the blood has done. And when we do it, there's a direct application that cuts down sin. The devil shuts down bad habits and gives us the power to move on. First to receive and then to move forward. So it's the word of our testimony. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the curse of the enemy. So we speak what the blood has accomplished. In the first service, we canceled demonic assignments against every one of the four communities city church is in and shut it right down because you and I have been made ministers, spiritual ministers of the new covenant, and we have the power to minister what the blood has done. So... That's what it does. And when that happens, the power of the blood is still activated. It shuts the enemy down. And so we need to personally testify to what the Word says the blood has done. And so uh, before I go into some testimonies of, of, of changed lives and healing, the Bible also says that the blood has, through, of Christ provides healing as well as salvation, not to speak of other things. We'll watch that. But before we do that, I want us to make a confession today. 
a confession about what the Word says the blood has done, that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who we are. I want you to think about your own life. Think about your wife, your kids, your family, your workplace, your world of influence, and let's speak the power of the blood of Christ over ourselves personally together in a corporate confession, just like you did back when you were in some church where you recited the Apostles' Creed or you were at a mass and you all spoke something together. Let's, there is tremendous power in corporate confession. So let's, let's all uh, recite together this confession for overcomers. Let's do this. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Redeemed, forgiven, cleansed, justified, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, the devil has no place in me and no power over me. The members of my body are holy, set apart for God's service. I do not own my life. My body is for the Lord, and the Lord is for my body. Amen? Awesome! I am telling you, listen to some stories now of we can see what the power of the blood can do in a broken life and change someone's eternal address as well as their present life and future. Started about two years ago. I had many symptoms, signs of stroke, and didn't go in for them. And next thing I knew, I had a massive stroke. They told me I had 48 hours to live. I couldn't talk, couldn't walk. My left side would not even move. My left arm wasn't moving, my left leg wasn't moving. Couldn't speak, but I could remember what I was trying to say, but I couldn't say it. And one day, Pastor Doug came in, and I just sat there and just said, I love Jesus. I knew I was saying it, but I knew I wasn't speaking it. just wanted it to get better. I had to go in for surgery. The next morning, the lady come in, she was a minister, and she said, you're a miracle. And I was alive. I spent three months in therapy. I kept fighting with it and fighting with it. And just, I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up. I was losing sight of my eye. After I had the surgery, I was starting to get it back and I started getting pressure and very, very bad headaches. I felt like there was pine needles sticking through my eye and I was in pain. I had 29 pounds of pressure on my eye. It was excruciating pain. And I just kept saying, I kept fighting through it. I'm gonna make it through this. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And Satan, keep away from me, just keep away. Um, you split the sea so I could walk right through them where I am a child of God. And I believe that. Came in here, Good Friday. My eyes were blurry. I was having extreme headaches. I had Charlie Myers do a healing prayer on me. I started to cry. I had water just pouring down my face. I opened my eyes and I could see. I have no blurriness, nothing, no headaches. I have not since I day had them. I kept moving on. I kept moving on and just struggling and fighting. And I'm yours, Lord, I'm yours, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. And eventually, I was able to get a car, and I'm now able to drive, which is a very big accomplishment to me. I'm able to come over here and usher, which I just love, I just love ushering over here. I've been here 14 years, and I was not gonna give that up. I was bound determined not to give that up. I'm just grateful for every day the Lord lets me every Sunday. I, I just can't wait to be here to church and to serve. Some people don't realize it, that what I've gone through and what it's been to have this stroke. Every day just thanking the Lord and just thanking Him for what I do. And I just praise Him and praise Him every day. 14 years ago, I accepted Jesus over here after I was gonna commit suicide, but I did not commit suicide. I decided to stick this out. 
I was on coke and crack cocaine very bad. And in 14 years, I have not done any drugs. It just, it, it left me. No matter what struggles you have in your life, don't give up, don't give up, just keep on going. And that's all I do, every day. Praise the Lord, every day, Satan was trying to fight me, have a struggle with me, with a stroke, trying to bring me down, and I wasn't gonna let him. I wasn't gonna let him. And here I am today, two years later. Just able to serve the Lord. I'm just thankful for it. I'm just thankful. My name is Mike Finkler, and this is my story. Who needs to preach in this place? And not me. Here, you know, oh, Mike, there's a verse that Psalmist said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in God's house than dwell in the, in the tents of sin for a season. I think Mike's going to have a really big usher job in a really big house someday. You know, I hasn't seen or ear hasn't heard what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. Jesus in the parables, we're going to talk a little about this in the kingdom series that's coming up, but he just said to the servant who was faithful with a couple of minas, he says, you've been faithful in just little things. He says, I'm going to put you in charge of five cities. Because God, I'm telling you, the rewards of righteousness. Do you see how a man who could have killed himself and be dead and in hell instead, 10,000 years from now, he won't even be getting started. All because of the blood of Christ that cleansed him and gave him a new life. I know this man. I know the transformation, and he's done it with many, many of you. And so I just challenge you as we continue to, to do this, just receive the grace that's even coming off the screen into your life for healing, for the presence of God. Listen to this amazing story also. God has such healing power, and we'll never understand fully his healing power, but he heals yet today. My wife had, first wife had terrible bone spurs. By the way, when you don't see Karen down here or Carter, we're not fighting. She's usually in the back working. And some of you can go back there and work too. Uh, <laughs> so my wife can be in the audience. Either way, here, that's irrelevant. The, um, my first wife, Barbara, had bad bone spurs. She was beautiful. She dropped out of modeling school to go to Bible college where I met her. But you want to know what? She had bone spurs so bad, no matter how beautiful she was, she had to wear white nurse's shoes. You know, them funny ones that the nurses don't even like to wear. And, uh, and uh, she, she walked like this just the last year of her life. She was, and suddenly we were in a meeting worshiping God. We had a huge thing like the service we're having today. And, uh, and uh, she went up for prayer. She'd been up for prayer before. I'd prayed for her. Everybody prayed for her. But some, her hands were laid on her. Boom, she fell over on the ground, got up. And her feet and bone spurs were completely healed after a couple of years of real agony and pain. And she jumped all over the place, just dancing and leaping around. She could put her lady killer shoes back on and go crazy again. She was slamming her feet on the floor. She was totally healed. And six days later, she was killed in a car accident. I go, God, why did you bother? He's God. He knows what he's doing. He was just getting her dancing feet ready for eternity. Who knows? Who knows what he was going to do with his daughter, and who knows what he's going to do with you five minutes from now or five years or five seconds from now. But just realize this. He's a loving dad who is pouring grace out on you and receive, even while you hear this beautiful story from Belinda uh, about a healing that happened with her. So I'm a hairdresser. I have done my job for 30 plus years. I love, love my job. Over the last five years, my body has started to feel my job. Um, and in that, I have endured a lot of shoulder and neck pain at an extreme level. I've seen a physical therapist. I have seen a chiropractor. I have pursued prayer over this and in the back corner of the church after service, but the pain stayed and remained. January 22nd. It was a Wednesday night. I serve in our youth group. This is a new position for me and I have fallen in love with it. 
Carrie, one of our teachers and leaders, brought a message on the Holy Spirit. At the end of the message, Chad came up and did a, um, a call of salvation and kids raised their hands. It was wonderful. But then Chad took it another step and had said to the kids, like anyone who wants to have the Holy Spirit be more manifested in them, to experience the gifts of the Holy Spirit and to ask the Holy Spirit to come alive in them, to come forth. He asked them to actually step out of their seats. This was incredibly moving because the whole center aisle and the whole front was completely filled with kids. As a leader, as a mom who has prayed intently over her kids, watching kids step up to ask the Holy Spirit to impact them was so beautiful. And normally I'm a back row dweller because I have all 11th grade girls and um, they hang out in the back. So I try to hang out back by them. And this time, way out of character for me, the Lord was like, move forward. This is, you know, I'm moving you through the Spirit. I want you to move up there and pray over these kids. And so I did. So I moved and weaved my way through and just praying over them. And it was like this amazing moment. And you couldn't miss the power of the Holy Spirit. Like you couldn't miss His presence. And it was incredible. And these kids, I mean, tears streaming down their face. Some of them just like embracing it. Some of them so quiet and stoic. And, um, and I am just praying over all of them in my spirit tongue and quietly within, you know, and um, it was just amazing. So then the next thing was the Lord was like, I want you to kneel down at the stage. And <laughs> already, I'm already at the front and you're gonna have me kneel at the stage. And he was like saying to me, I just want you to, to kneel below them so that they can see reverence and humility and that they can see what it means to serve a father. And so I did. A lot of that is really uncomfortable for me to be out of my comfort zone and to be vulnerable where others can see because I have always felt so insufficient. I knelt down and just started praying and tears were flowing because there was this great moment because I knew God was going to change the hearts of many there. What I didn't expect was what happened next. My head was on the stage and I was praying and I was knelt down and um, a hand touched my right shoulder and then a hand touched my left shoulder. When the hand touched my left shoulder, I was so overwhelmed because the pain in my shoulder had instantly gone away and I fought every tear because I kept going, what are you doing, Lord? I'm not even up here for myself. I'm here for them and you're going to touch me. I was so overwhelmed by it. The hand on my left shoulder lifted and the pain came back. And then the hand went back on my shoulder and the pain went away. And I just sat there in awe, fighting tears. I'm a leader. I got to keep it together. We're going to have small group. And I'm like, you're bringing me healing. I didn't ask. I've wanted it for so long and you're touching me right now. You're going to do this right now while I'm on my knees before these kids and they're receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then after service, um, I went up to Kate and I shared with her what had happened. And she's like, do you know who it was? Who, were the, who, who was touching you? And I'm like, I have no idea. After that, I left and I will never forget this moment because I'm walking to my car and I'm about ready to fall apart because I have no pain. And I have had pain for so long that walking without pain was incredible. And all of a sudden I hear this little voice behind me go, ma'am, and I turn around. I walked right up to the car and I'm like, were you praying on me? Were you the one praying on me? Who had their hand on my left shoulder? The young guy behind him reaches out and touches my hand. And this is where it gets me every time. And I was like, what did God tell you? What did the Lord tell you at that moment? And he looked at me and he goes, the Lord told me you were in a lot of pain. No, when an eighth grader moves in faith, puts his hand on your shoulder, because they're just moving in the moment, uninhibited. They haven't been through healing school. They haven't been through training. They aren't all Bible knowledge dot, and they hear the Lord and the voice of the Lord and tell you exactly what is going on. It rocks your world.
totally wrecks your world. And all I can think about is getting home to my quiet home to journal and unload and let go. I, I really wanted to just fall apart. I get home and I sit at my counter and I start to unload through the tears of what God had just done for me. Writing this all out and I write down the boy's name, Nehemiah, I fell apart again. The Sunday prior to that Wednesday, I was reviewing a bunch of old journals from a personal study I had done with the Lord on Nehemiah. God had revealed to me that the gates and the walls in which Nehemiah went back to repair were my body. I can remember saying to him, whatever walls are crumbling in my life, Lord, fix them. So I had left it at that until that moment when I was journaling everything. And, and the Lord said, I want you to understand this was me. I had Nehemiah come up, put his hand on your left shoulder so that you would understand this was me repairing the walls, repairing the gate. Because how many kids are named Nehemiah? Not very many. And that's how God has made his word so intimate to me throughout the many years. So I have thoroughly been enjoying his touch, thoroughly in awe of his healing, and thoroughly overwhelmed by his presence. My name is Belinda Ungry, and this is my story. Just, just want to, at this moment, before we go any further, we're going to talk about baptism, we're going to have communion and everything else, but if, on the airwaves and in the room, if you're not right with God and you don't know for sure you're a child of God, you can apply the blood of Christ to your life and you can literally have your mind, your heart, and conscience cleansed and feel the peace of God, the peace that the world tries so many different ways to get, you can have it right here, right today, right now. And uh, I just want to challenge you today. The Hebrew writer in one of the books of the Bible constantly says, if you're hearing his voice and you feel that pull, don't pull away, don't resist, yield to him. You know, it will change your life. Like we were talking about these stories, it's just incredible. And by the way, healing power is still working. Mentally, spiritually, physical things are happening. You know, Carter leans over to me during Belinda's little testimony here. He hurt his neck this last week. He hurt his neck, and he just whispered. He says, the pain in my neck just disappeared. You know what? Here's the thing. There's other things like this going to happen all the way through the service. Just we're in God's presence. We're soaking corporately with our Heavenly Father. So don't miss this moment, but don't get this moment. If you're not a child of God, you're not a member of his family, you're not secure about this life or the next, I'm telling you, we're going to pray a prayer and apply what Christ's blood has purchased for you for free. And that is how we apply it to our life. In our heart, we know it's true. With our mouth, we activate it. Remember, it's your hyssop branch, and it will activate it. Everything that Jesus ever did for you will begin to take place and so uh, I want everyone to bow their heads for a moment you know there's a story about a man who was looking for his car keys in his pickup truck and when he was looking he found a lotto ticket that he had bought a while back and lost and he went and he checked the number and it was the giant giant jackpot of millions and millions of dollars it changed his life it changed his family his world of influence and that's just a material thing but that's how salvation is an eternal life and a whole life that God has planned for you that you don't want to miss and it's just waiting right at the door for you to activate it and just activate it for free and then you're going to begin to live in a different way. And instead of suicide or fear, a life of self-centeredness or isolation, you're going to find a life like Mike and some of these others have shared that will never end, that's full of God's grace and leading. So if that's you today, every head bowed, every eye closed on a line. If this is you and you want to pray a life-changing prayer and receive his salvation, his grace, 
and apply it to your life right where you are. Just put your hand over your heart. In the room here, we're not going to call anyone forward, but if that's you and you want it on the books that today was the turning point of your life for salvation, just for a moment, slip your hand up and put it back down. Don't miss this moment to get right. Don't miss this moment to get right. I see your hands throughout the audience, throughout the back, here, down front. God bless you. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss it. Awesome. Pray this prayer with me. We'll all pray it together. It'll change your life. Pray this prayer. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I need your grace. I believe you died on the cross for me. And you rose again. I ask you into my heart. Forgive my sins. And make me your child. I receive your grace. Thank you for saving me. I will follow you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we cancel every plan the enemy had over every life and every prayer that was prayed in the name of Jesus. God, open a new and living way for everyone. Let your peace settle down on them. And Lord, teach them how to walk in your grace and finish the good work that you started in them today in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Give God a hand and thank him for his grace. Just a quick expository on baptism, very quickly, to all of you who are getting baptized today, congratulations. In fact, could you all stand up and turn around and wave at everybody? Come on, come on, everybody, look at this. And look at that. Awesome, you can be seated. And look how young they are. That's where we, we're, that's where we like to start, I love that. Um, but I want to tell you, baptism is heaven's mark on you. Religions and different groups of people all the way back to the ancients m marked themselves. And you could tell so much by that mark. You see someone with a red dot on their forehead, you instantly know what their religion is, or their mindset is, what some of their goals and aspirations. You know a whole lot about them from the mark. Everything from ranchers branding cattle to different organizations and stuff having a mark. Well, God has a mark, heaven has a mark, and you know what it is? It's baptism. In the Old Testament, God's covenant people were circumcised uh, to show with a mark to show that they were covenant people of the law of the book and they belonged to God. God literally commanded circumcision at the procreative center of man. Um, and literally because we're partners in creating, procreating life. But when you and I are baptized, we become ministers of reconciliation and we can share the divine life of God and impart it. So what does he do? He says, as a sign, an outward sign of that inward turning and that new spiritual ability, you are to be baptized. And what happens, that activates so many things, you guys. Uh, you, you go to heaven, the thief in the cross made it to heaven without getting baptized. But baptism is part of what you naturally do. You naturally do it. And when you do, here's what happens. What happened to it? God baptized the whole nation of Israel. It was so important. He delivered them by the blood from Egypt. But now look at this, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2. It says, brothers, I don't want you to be unaware that all our fathers, that's Israel, were under the cloud, passed through the sea, and were all baptized to Moses through the cloud and the, Dead sea, the Red Sea. The walls of water opened up before them. The cloud of God's presence was over them, and they went under that covering through the water, covered by the presence, and came down on the other side. What was the end result? Their enemies from Egypt who came after them were all drowned in that sea right after that. And this is what happens in baptism. God slams the door on your past. He seals you for a new era of life, puts distance between you and everything that you ever had to deal with, and set you apart for something new and drown your enemies in the process. Spiritual things become easier. Understanding the Bible, hearing the voice of God, so many things will become easier and more spiritually capable because you are doing this. Now, I want to say this. Before we go into the next phase of our service, if you're here and you committed your life to Christ today while we're worshiping and baptizing, get up and go out the back door, put on a start a fire with water shirt and get baptized get in the line don't procrastinate put feet on your faith put activate it there was a guy going between two giant buildings on a high wire with a wheelbarrow full of bricks and the crowds were watching and he walked on this tight wire 
very carefully to the other side. And when he got to the other side, the crowd screamed its approval. Yo, man! And he turned to them all and he says, do you believe I can do it again? And they all screamed, yeah, yeah, do it again. He turned to a man standing nearby. He says, do you believe I can do it again? And the guy says, oh yeah, I do. And he says, well, get in the wheelbarrow. You've asked him in, but I'm asking you to bust a move. Get wet. Belinda's a beautician. She was on her knees. God healed her. Her makeup's running. She, everything she doesn't like. But I'm telling you, get in the tank. Get wet. Get yourself baptized and separated from your past and open up a new and living way, and it'll all become clear and better. Amen? Awesome. So, yeah, clap a minute while I think of what I'm going to do next. Baptism is the outward sign of an inward turning, an outward sign we're marked for heaven. Now, what I wanted to do before we have baptism is I want us to have communion together. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Take your elements. If you are online, uh, take your elements, take some elements. Saltine crackers will work, bread will work, juice will work, but get it together because we're going to have a covenant meal together and we're going to remember what Jesus did for us. And there'll be more and more power and grace released through it. So important. Paul told the church, he, he, had, a, he had a vision where he went up into eternity and Jesus himself told him, make sure everybody keeps the Lord's Supper. And he came back, you see when he was, Paul wasn't with the 12 disciples when Jesus first had it. He had a tr vision where literally Christ himself showed him the glories of the next age in eternity. And then he reminded Paul, you tell my church to take communion and remember my death for them till I come back for them. And so he said in 1 Corinthians 11, he said, that which I received from the Lord, I pass on to you. That Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he broke it, he had given thanks. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken from you. In like, in, in like manner, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And he said, drink from this. It's my blood poured out in a new covenant. I'm going to cancel everything that was bad about you and open up everything good, and that was new. So when we take communion, we toast two things. We toast the grace of God in our lives. And we remember that his body got ripped up, cut up, stabbed, spiked beard torn out, crown of thorns for the curse of toil. He bore and was torn up so that our bodies could become the temple of the Holy Spirit and the third member of the Trinity could live inside us. And so that our bodies could receive healing and be used to do his work. And that our bodies eventually will receive a brand new resurrection body that will never die. All because his body was broken for us. And he says this, each one of you is only a little piece of my body. And you all got to get together like we are today. And that represents a, a full picture, a complete picture. Every person working together, every person a piece of God's beautiful, beautiful family. So today, let's eat in faith, knowing that his body was broken. So our bodies could become his temple and we could become his family. Let's eat. blood of Christ is God's atomic weapon. Where one drop is enough power to turn the world inside out and upside down. Save your soul from hell. Break demonic bondage off you. Heal you. Set you apart on a road to eternal life that will never pass away. The blood of the covenant with our eternal high priest as the one meteor between God and man. And so that we apply the blood today corporately to this place to Cedar Springs, to Sparta, and to Greenville, and to our world of influence as we confess and as we drink. And I am just going, I just want to say this, that the power of Christ's blood is going, going to go on and on and on, but there's two ways to keep it working. Let's remember this, if we walk in the light like he is, in other words, we're following his commands for our life, and we have fellowship with one another like we're having today, the blood of Jesus is cleansing us now and continually from all sin. Let's drink.
God, I pray for this place. I pray for all four of our campuses. I pray for your great grace to settle on us. Lord, do an explosive work by your blood in our lives and through our churches that touches all four cities and spreads like wildfire throughout this state and beyond. We thank you for your grace and we look to you. And now may the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May the Lord lift up his presence on you all and give you his peace now and forever. And everybody said, amen. Let's all stand up. Let's begin to celebrate with baptism. We're going to be baptizing uh, all, all these. And, and if you want to get in line, get baptized. We're going to have baptism and worship now and continue to receive from the Lord as we worship.
Amen.